Hi, I'm Karen Stack from Lick the Bowl. Welcome to Cake TV brought to you by Renshaw. Today, I'm going to show you how to cover these cake boards using some Renshaw fondant and finishing off each with a ribbon. We're also going to make this great checkerboard design using black contact. Let's get started. We're going to be needing some fondant and I'm going to use this great Renshaw fondant that comes in a 10 kilo bucket. Inside the bucket are four individually wrapped packets of two and a half kilos each. And I love that because you don't need to open all the packets at the one time. Now I'm just gonna need the fondant and get it ready to use. So now we're ready to roll the fondant out. I need to pop a little bit of corn flour on my bench first, just to make sure that the fondant's not going to stick. Don't need too much, just a little bit. I'm going to grab my rolling pin. I just want to make sure that it's clean. I will start rolling the fondant. When I'm rolling the fondant, I don't roll it right to the edge. I normally stop. I'll twist my fondant around and I'll roll some more. Now I'm just gonna size up, make sure that I've got enough rolled out to cover my cake board. I'll just pick up my cake board and I've got plenty of fondant that I've rolled out ready to cover the cake board. My next step's going to be buffing the fondant with a cake smoother, just to get out any imperfections if there are any little air bubbles. I've rolled this Renshaw fondant out to about two millimetres thick. It's great fondant because it allows me to roll it out nice and thin without tearing. If you've got any air bubbles in your fondant, a great tip is to use an acupuncture needle to get the air bubble out. Acupuncture needles are great because they don't leave any marks. And also another good tip is to put some sticky tape with a little bit of a coloured end on there so that it doesn't get lost on your bench. Okay, so now we're ready to pop the fondant on the cake board. I need to put some water on here first, just to make sure that it sticks. I'm just gonna spritz a little bit of water, not too much. Don't wanna overload it with water. Just a couple of little sprays. Now I'm ready to pick up the fondant and pop it on top of the cake board. I'm just gently pick it up and slide it over. I'll grab my cake smoother again. Just give it a nice buff to make sure that it's adhered properly. My next step now is to remove the excess fondant from the side of the cake board. I use two cake smoothers to do this, one to hold the cake board and the other to remove the fondant from the side of the cake. I'll pull my cake board just a little bit over to the end of the bench. And with my cake smoother on an angle, I'm just going to start coming around here. I hold my cake smoother at an angle to get a nice beveled edge around the side of the cake board. And you'll see when I spin it around that the edge here has got a nice beveled edge. So I'll just pick the cake board up. The rest of the fondant can be kneaded quickly and just um, pop it back in the bucket, ready to use again for next time. I'm just gently going to smooth the fondant that I've put on top of the cake board, but I don't want to press it too far over the edge. I don't want to put any pressure on there because I don't want to move the fondant off my cake board. I'll just give it a nice smooth. And if there's any areas on the side that need to be taken off, I can just take them off with my finger. The fondant on the cake board is nice and smooth and I'm ready to attach my ribbon. My ribbon is the same millimetre size as the edge here of my cake board, so I know it's going to fit on nice and, and snug. I'm going to attach some double-sided tape all the way around the cake board and then put the ribbon around. I'll just start from the edge and work my double-sided tape all the way around. Once I've made sure that the double-sided tape's on nice and securely, we're ready to go around with the ribbon. Using double-sided tape is a really good way to make sure that that ribbon stays on nice and neatly all the way around the side. Now I'm just gonna chop the end of the, the ribbon off. Makes a great addition to your displayed cake. Now I'm gonna show you how to cover a square cake board. I've prepared the fondant in exactly the same way. I'm just going to lift the fondant up and pop it straight on top of my board. Again, 
give it a bit of a smooth with the cake smoother. And using one cake smoother to hold the fondant, use my cake smoother again on an angle and cut straight down. It's a lot easier to do a square cake board. It's just one motion and the fondant will come off. I'll hold my cake smoother on an angle again and press into the side of the board, creating a nice beveled edge on the side of the cake. Now I'm going to attach the ribbon in exactly the same way as I did before with some double-sided tape. Just press with your fingers. Just make sure that that tape has stuck to the side of the board. Just making sure that the tape is on nice and securely before I take the excess off. I'll grab my ribbon and attach it to the edge of the cake board. Snip off the excess and it's the perfect finishing touch to your cake board. The next board I'm going to show you is this checkerboard. We'll be starting with a white cake board. I'm going to show you a really quick effective way of using some contact to create some really sharp detailed effects to get this greater look. I've got some black contact that I'm going to put on top of my cake board to make sure that it's the right size. I want to make sure that the black contact goes all the way around to the edges of my white cake board. So this is the perfect size for my cake board. So I've taken the backing off. I'm carefully going to pick it up and pop it on my cake board. I'm going to start by putting it on the edge first so that I can smooth it down to stop any air bubbles. So now my cake board is completely covered. I'm going to cut the excess off the sides. I'll turn it over and if there's any air bubbles, you can just quickly push them out. My next step is to use a metal ruler and a scalpel blade to cut squares into the cake board. I'm going to use this mat with ruled lines as a guide to cut one inch squares out of the contact. I'm using the cake board, the lines on the cake board, and just scoring all the way down. I'll turn the cake board around and do exactly the same on the other side. So I finished doing my scoring. I'm going to slowly start taking each square off, starting on one corner first to reveal a checkerboard pattern. When you're removing the contact, just be sure to use the corner of your scalpel blade so that you're not removing the white of the cake board. So there you go, three simple ways to finish off your cake boards to enhance your cake design. Thanks so much for joining me today on Cake TV, brought to you by Renshaw. I'm Karen Stack from Lick the Bowl. is just going to be the worst day of my life. <laughs> Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this great checkerboard plate. <laughs> ah! It's great! Great! Welcome to Cake TV. <laughs> oh, sorry! <laughs> Brought to you by Renshaw, I'm Karen Stack. From Lick the Bowl. From Lick the Bowl. <laughs>